Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ozone. Today we are reacting to something I didn't think would come out for another few weeks, but it has, it just dropped yesterday. Uh, and this is Game Theory FNAF Another Mystery Solved. Um, I know exactly what this mystery is because I did my own theory video on it. Uh, yeah, I didn't think another Game Theory reaction would come out soon, but um, here we go. <laughs> I'm a bit late, I'm a bit late, but um, at least I'm doing this one. I didn't do the last one because I recorded my reaction and then the video corrupted and then... Uh, anyway, let's get into this. Uh, I can assure you it's going to be about Michael Afton being the, the older brother, but we're going to watch it anyway. Let's go. I knew he was going to do this. You can be a pirate. To lose an eye and an arm. First, you need to lose an eye and an arm. Buffering. <laughs> Yay. My computer is just really bad today. <laughs> uh, I don't really know what's, what's going on with, like, literally everything today. My voice is going weird. My computer is going weird. It's not a good day. <laughs> Let's just try again. Yeah, you lose an eye. You lose an arm. There we go. I'm excited. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game, Game Theory. Theory. The show that is, without exaggeration, thinking of reaching out to Scott Cawthon so that we can jointly buy Chuck E. Cheese's quickly dying restaurant franchise so we can transform them into what they were always meant to be, real world FNAF experiences. Heck, they've already got the terrible <laughs> pizza taken care idea. of. We could probably even sell the idea to YouTube Originals and make a whole series about trans... Honestly, that is such a good idea. Imagine if Chuck E. Cheese did that. That would be like FNAF World. FNAF World. You have Disney World. We could have FNAF World. We could just turn the old pizzeria into the old pizzeria into like a uh, like a Fazbear Fright. Wouldn't wouldn't that be amazing? And then in, in 2023 or something, it all burns down. That would be so insane and cool. I would love that. Um, but just the fact that we're coming up to 2023 is amazing. We like we should do that. Forming the pizzerias into <laughs> horror-themed dining experiences, which would also help mitigate the cost of doing all that. No joking here, Scott. This is something we absolutely can and probably should do. I've recreated your Definitely. games before in real life, and they seem to be pretty well received. <laughs> So, between my theater background and your, well, you know, your gobs <laughs> of money and masterminding of the IP, I think we can make something that's really cool. And yeah, the reason I'm bringing it up here is so fans can start talking about the idea both here and on Reddit to show you how excited they are for this to happen. Anyway, let me just leave it at, you have my email, I eagerly await your response. Who knows, you've <laughs> probably already bought it at yes. this point, you're just Do waiting it. to reveal that fact to the world. Speaking of Chuck E. Cheese restaurants, the grandpappy of FNAF, I actually have a theory in the works about those pizzerias that any FNAF fan will enjoy. The episode will be going live in the next few weeks on my newest theory channel, Food Theory. Which, really? If you haven't okay. Checked out yet, you totally should. Link is. I mean, I, I've seen, I've seen some of the videos. They are good. They are good. I, I don't know if I like the concept or not. I don't know if I like the concept uh, of how he's, he's now got, you know, he's got game theory and film theory which which is which is good then food theory seems a bit out there it's a bit of a stretch i mean what else are you gonna do <laughs> music theory <laughs> which already exists i mean game theory still already exists but um yeah like, uh, it's a bit of a stretch but it kind of works it works down in the description. Yes, it sounds like a joke. No, it's not. We've not only got episodes about Chuck E. Cheese on the way, but also horror episodes like how the ghost of KFC's Colonel Sanders has been cursing people for decades. Yes, it is a real thing that we are currently researching. It's the same science, math, and over-research that we do over here, except, you know, on real lifetime. 
Stop buffering! Mix. And for anyone who's hesitant to check out a channel about food, we're already winning people over. Like Jack here over on Twitter who said he started out skeptical, but watched the episodes and immediately got the concept. We've got over they half on a, live a million well. subscribers in the first 24 hours. That, now that is really, insane. That really, really close to that million in these first two weeks. So please, please, please help us reach that milestone in, million record subscribers in a week. time. Show the world how passionate nice. we theorists are by shattering that subscriber record. And hey, FNAF even already has made an appearance on the show. It's in every Every single intro of food theory. So subscribe to food theory today to get oh your daily God. dose of brain food. Is actually, I need to go back and watch it. Really fun. All right, a new month, a new FNAF book, a new set of lore reveals. Correct. Earlier this month, the latest Fazbear Fright book, Step Closer, hit store shelves, and even though it has a super forgettable name, the stories inside of it are epic. Not just because it is some very epic. These are like, these are, I would say these are the most confusing of all of them. But I think the first one he's going to talk about the most today, and it's going to be about Michael Afton. It has to be. It can't be about anything else. Um, that's the biggest law reveal. The gruesome in the series. I mean, page one literally starts with a dream sequence where a kid's eye gets popped by Foxy's hook. But because Correct. of the lore drops that are happening in this thing, they are huge. Yeah. Up until this point, the Fazbear yeah. Frights books have given us interesting concepts to chew on, fleshing out the world of FNAF and giving us new insights into events that we already had a pretty good handle on. It's been useful, certainly, but nothing too earth-shattering. Cool animatronics can have people stuffed inside of them. Confirmed outright in book one, people can have animatronics stuffed inside inside of them. Confirmed in book three. Everything is powered by human agony. The missing children's incident probably happened in 1985. Animatronics can steal yeah. identities. Humans Bail. can be body swapped with animatronics. Golden Freddy might have multiple souls trapped inside of him. Ghosts might be able to escape from their animatronic prisons to lure more people to them. Like, there has been a lot across Correct. all of these stories, hence why I've been covering it's these books It's just kind so of... It's, it's kind of the basis of how... It's teaching us how the FNAF universe works. It's less of, um... Oh, this person goes into this animatronic, you know, this person goes into that animatronic. It's more how the universe works in FNAF. Um, and now we're being introduced to things like Agony, and it's all showing us, like, how everything comes together uh, and how things work, basically. Step Closer's lore drops are attacking some of the biggest lingering questions still in existence for yeah. these games. The ones presented to us by the two most frustrating games in the franchise, FNAF 4 and FNAF 6. Correct. Questions that are still yeah. hotly debated by the FNAF community. So today we're looking at the first of those debates, the ones related to FNAF 4, looking at what those answers mean for yes. the rest of the series. Yes. Today we yes. confirm the identity of this guy, the older brother, Foxy Bro. I called Real it. Quick, though, I called it. To the meet of this theory, let's it's my Clapton through probably the just least just skip all this it's michael after the middle one titled dance with me in it we cover casey the God young woman's coming from a tragic <laughs> childhood she lives on the street picking pockets and nabbing yeah. purses one day she robs a mother and a young girl outside of circus baby's pizza world which we're told has itself a big red door woo, 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 woo. potentially important Wait. detail alert anyway i don't remember that detail did i just skip over that Oh, okay. I I did not remember that. Let's carry on. One of the items on. that she nabs is a set of cardboard glasses. When yeah. Casey puts them on, she sees a hologram of Ballora spinning in the distance. Weirded out by this, she has other people try the glasses on and no one else manages to see Ballora. From that point onward, each time she puts on the glasses, the hologram gets closer and closer, which begins to freak her out to the point of her leaving town and trying to put her life back together in hopes that it gets Ballora to leave her alone. A couple cities and failed jobs later, Casey eventually decides decides to return the stolen items to the mother and the daughter. People, I was asking people on Discord, and <clears throat> I was like, well, this story, it's so weird and it's so vague. And then they were all like, no, surely it's just a clear ending. Casey instead nabs the girl because she's the one who puts the glasses on next and the dancing is the girl becoming possessed or if it's the girl just excited to be dancing alongside one of her favorite characters, mm -hmm. Laura. That's anyway, what I just said, basically. to talk about with this one. The technology is super strange. Freddy's is apparently yes. advanced enough to have holographic... One of the things, sorry to keep pausing it, obviously. I've, I've had thingies about that in the past, but... Um... The thing about the Ballora thingy is that it changes the environment around you, so when she spins around, like, leaves go around her. Like, it's super creepy, it's super strange, and the technology is insane. It must be some sort of illusion disc or something, but 
sucked into her vortex. For a few seconds, Casey admired the beauty, but then she thought, wait, if Ballora is just a picture, a hologram, then how is she affecting the objects around her? It didn't make sense. Welcome to the world of being a FNAF theorist, Casey. <laughs> it didn't make sense. Prepare to get that one tattooed on your forehead. But in all seriousness, it does raise a big question. Is she actually a hologram or just invisible and the glasses are somehow revealing her? It's unclear. Today I'm going to be talking oh, a lot a, about that's a good concept. That's a good concept that she's invisible and the glasses are revealing her. It doesn't explain how only Casey can see her, though. That doesn't make sense to me. Maybe it's like Casey's devil or something, because she did. she's doing something bad, she's stealing things, and when she does something good, she goes away. So I don't know, I don't know. Details that just seem so oddly specific for a book to call out that it feels like the book is trying to tell us something, and this seems like one of them, but while I could spend a lot of time trying to figure it out, to my knowledge, holographic or invisible animatronics haven't really been a thing yet in the franchise, so we'll just have to cross that bridge when it becomes important. Unless, yeah, I guess. Oh, damn it, it might be a phantom animatronic. No, no, they don't interact with the real world, do they? Last point to be made about this story, though, is its recurring theme of mothers and motherhood. A lot of the backstory that we get on Casey is her trouble relationship with her mom, which has played a big part in how her life ended up the way it did. Casey, throughout the story, is also visited by an older woman at a bus station that gives her grandmotherly advice. She's saved from the police by another elderly woman. She makes amends with that mother and daughter that have a relationship that she envies. I mean, it could be me thinking too much about this, big surprise, but it doesn't feel like a coincidence that Ballora is the main animatronic featured in a story about true, motherly true. relationships. I had a theory I didn't a think about long that. time ago, two years ago, that Ballora Laura was some sort of stand-in for Mrs. Afton. Not in any... No, definitely. Um, that was a theory. I don't think it's true. I don't think there's much proof for it except Laura's song. But that was a thing. That was a thing. And I think Scott could be... Could be looking back at it like it is, but I don't think so. I don't know. He, I think he's looking he's too into it. sort of creepy way. Get your mind out of the gutters. I mean, that she represents the wife that William Afton lost or divorced him or most... It, by baby. It I mean, could just have been. look at the song that Ballora sings in Sister Location. Why do you hide Again, I'm speaking for Matt. I should just stop pausing it and let him speak. <laughs> I can see why you guys get annoyed now. All I see is an empty room. No more joy. Tomb. An empty tomb, aka the bedroom of our tragically deceased child, William hides inside his walls by diving even deeper into his work. It's something that William's partner Henry does in the original novel trilogy. When he loses his daughter, he shuts out the rest of the world, hiding behind his walls and obsessing over his work to try and bring her back. And so when William does this in the games, his wife is left alone and probably ends up leaving him. As such, as some sort of coping mechanism, William recreates her in animatronic form depicting her with perpetually shut eyes because to William, she was blind to what needed to be done to rebuild the family. Blind to the fact that his that work was stretch. so important. She wanted to move <laughs> on to do frivolous things like sing and spin and dance, or at least that's how he felt from his perspective. William Afton was mired in his own misery of loss. Like I said, it's a bit of a stretch and something that I've lightly talked about before, but I thought the connection between Ballora and mothers in this story was particularly interesting and worth calling okay. out. Anyway, yeah. onward to the that real story I want to address today, Step Closer, which isn't just sparking new theories, but is straight up confirming stuff that we've argued about for years. In it, we meet Pete, a 16-year-old who, due to their parents' divorce, has to babysit his little brother, Chuck the Chump. One day, while watching him at a Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, Pete, annoyed about having to be the responsible this story was one, very decides confusing. to scare Not as Chuck confusing a little coming by home, taking him backstage it was still confusing. to see an out-of-service Foxy. Pete fires... up the machine and Chuck runs away, leaving Pete alone to get seemingly hypnotized by Foxy's performance, a performance that repeats to lose an eye and an arm. And from there, you can probably guess what happens. Over the next few days, Pete gets into multiple accidents that put either his mm -hmm. eye or his arm I love it. in danger. I love, I love the a concept. A scalpel nearly hits his eye in science class. A butcher knife almost chops off his hand at the store. A buzzsaw blade shoots out at him from a nearby construction site. He gets hooked in the face by a fishing line, and he almost loses a hand to a Chinese finger trap at the school carnival. Anyway, the two brothers eventually make amends and come to the realization that Pete needs to face down Foxy to break some curse. Pete rushes to Freddy's, but in his panic, he's hit by an oncoming truck and killed. Out of nowhere. It's this awful, 
awful reveal that you absolutely do not see coming because you feel so bad for this kid. You're like, oh, he's apologized to his brother. They have a good relationship. They have a plan for getting Pete out of this after him being brutalized for the better part of a week. He's on his way to close off the story and then bam, it just ends. And that would be where the story ends, except for one thing. Pete is still alive. Kind of. We pick yeah, up I hate this so much. Where Pete's soul is trapped inside of his own dead body. Pete is an orphan. It's exactly what happens to Michael Afton. Dad. Thanks a lot for signing me up for that one, Mom. And just got I really hope he addresses the um, the chewing gum thing. I addressed that in my video. Um, hopefully there'll be like a link in the description or something. But I addressed in my video that um, that there was a lot of excessive chewing in this story and in the logbook. Um, it says that Michael um, was an excessive chewing gum chewer. Um, so there are a lo lot of links, and I, I hope he picks them all out. Emergency request for, you guessed it, an eye and a hand. Pete from FNAF 4, who repeatedly traumatizes his younger brother before eventually getting him chomped in the jaws of Fredbear. That is undeniably Michael Afton. Yes! 100%. Yes! Yes, 100%. Yes, 100%. Yes. 100%. Oh my god, I just want to say, while we're on this topic, I was always a Mike victima. I was always a Mike victima. I read this story, and instantly, just like that, just like that, Michael Afton is Foxy Bro. This story is incredible. The, the tiny details, like, Scott hid the chewing gum thing in the logbook, ages ago when when that came out and now he's only just bringing it out i wonder what other things we have missed and he is going to bring out in, in things like security breach or the other stories it's incredible it is absolutely incredible um how he just changed my mind just with one fast bear fright story it's incredible um but yeah i want to see what he has to say and for a while, and something that later evidence started to throw into question, but this story, happening five years after that game's initial release, finally yeah. clears it up for us. Obviously, there are I some superficial similarities here. Pete has a younger brother who's scared of the animatronics, just like Foxy Bro has the crying child, his younger brother who's scared of the animatronics. Pete is connected to Foxy throughout the story, mm -hmm. just like the brother in yeah. the Foxy mask. Pete and Chuck's parents are divorced, just like it seems William and Mrs. Mm -hmm. Afton are in the game, yeah. leaving the older brothers alone to care for their younger siblings. At one point in the story, Pete's hand starts to turn purple, purple, which points us back to Michael Afton and sister location physically turning purple. And then purple. he's trapped inside his own body. And the final scene where Pete should be dead, but isn't, which exactly mirrors the iconic words of one Michael Afton. Father, it's me, Michael. I should be dead, but I'm not. But all of it is just a bunch of weak parallels between Foxy Bro and Michael, and Michael and Pete, and Foxy Bro and Pete. How do we know for sure that all three of these characters are connected? One word... Oh my god, it's buffering, but gum, yes, I, okay, I forgot who, who it was who found it for me, um, but you have to watch my video to, to see that, but to, who, to whoever, gum, people ask me to whoever about. found it and I made the video on it, well done, like, yes, like, I don't even need to watch this video, everything that he's saying is literally what I've thought before, come on, Matt, come on. Do a massive law reveal. Oh, I come up with these theories, and more often than not, it's small details that just stick out as off for the author or game designer to include, as though they're purposely seeding these details out there to try and signal something to us. And in this particular story, the odd character detail of Pete is that he chews gum, chews gum. a lot. Page four, he's chewing watermelon gum while watching his brother. Later, when he's scared I've by literally the said all this in my video. the book makes mention of him swallowing that gum. Okay, that's fine. That's a one-off thing. No big deal. But later, on the way to the butcher shop, we're told that he quote pops a wad of watermelon gum into his mouth on the boat fishing with his dad he wishes he had brought his watermelon gum it is mentioned a <sighs> honestly a lot. i hate this <laughs> Come on. In this short story, enough that it sparked my fear senses we can get through this video. to look into later. Now, obviously, at no point during the <laughs> four or oh, that's heck, such cool animation. games do we see a character actively chewing gum. That'd be silly. But 
that's not the only place that we see these characters at this point. Let me direct your attention back to the FNAF the fl survival, yeah, survival log book. Book. Who knew that a book with dabbing Chica as an active selling feature would become the single most important item for lore solving yep. of this franchise? Yep. For those of you who don't remember this little gem, it's the log book, originally owned by Mike, as we see on the title page, that helped us to solve for Cassidy's yep, name. Mike has and the red you know it, but today it's also the thing that's gonna now reveal to us Michael Afton's true identity. Page 49, quote, list 10 bad habits you'd like to break. Number one, chewing gum excessively. I mean, there it is, plain as day. Pete chews gum excessively. Michael Afton chews gum excessively. Pete eventually turns purple and comes back to life after being dead. Michael Afton eventually turns purple and comes to life after being dead. Pete is an older brother who scares his younger sibling using Foxy. Foxy bro in FNAF 4 is an older brother who scares his younger sibling with Foxy. Pete equals Mike. I'm going to say from this, there's going to be Mike victimers. There's still going to be people who believe Mike victim after all of this. I think that one of the main arguments is that Pete isn't Michael, because why would he be? Because they got different names. Pete is a parallel to Michael. We're not saying Pete is Michael, and this is a story about Michael. We're saying Pete is a parallel to Michael, aka Pete represents Michael's story in a way. Um, the two are correlated, so I know we're not going to be able to please everyone. There's still going to be people who believe Mike victim, but the overarching theory right here is that Michael Afton is Mike bro. Uh, is Mike bro? It's the older brother. Michael and Michael equals FNAF 4's Foxy bro. Done. Confirmed. Another character identity locked. This detail has been sitting in the logbook for years. <laughs> yeah. Waiting to be used. I know. Quite impressive. Well done there, Scott. Well done. And this confirmation tells us everything we need so to know good. about Michael's motivation so for the rest of the game series. He's avenging his brother's death. The one that he made happen. When Golden Freddy appearances are accompanied by the words, it's me, it is literally the younger brother saying, it's me. I'm here to his older brother but of course of course of course oh yeah it's never that easy this same because there's security two log book, souls this golden thing Friday, and one of them is his so brother pivotal to solving so many mysteries of this franchise raises just as many challenges because sure here it just confirmed the foxy bro connection but then it also has lines like these page 103 the party was for you page 75 does he still talk to you in reference to psychic friend fredbear page i don't know anymore. was your favorite childhood toy a plastic purple telephone page 20 what do you remember and most troublesome of all page 31 do you remember your name all of these questions seem pointed to the crying child the party was for yeah. him his favorite toy was the purple telephone Fred Bear did talk That's to him and honestly. never to Foxy bro as far as we know in fact these are the exact questions that got us to throw the Foxy Michael connection away so many years ago why would the spirit that's contradicting book, evidence Cassidy, yeah. be telling Mike things that are very clear Clearly true of the crying child. If Mike was indeed the older brother the entire time, <laughs> maybe, like maybe Cassidy doesn't know who Michael Afton is. <laughs> maybe, maybe she just thinks Michael Afton. Like me, I don't know. Maybe she doesn't know who Michael Afton actually is. <laughs> so she's just directing it to Michael, but it's direct. It's like contradicting evidence. That would be funny latest Fazbear Fright story just confirmed for us. It doesn't make sense. Which is why now we have to solve these last two questions. What do you remember? Do you remember your name? I mean, yeah, I do remember my name. It's Mike. I wrote Mike on the first page of the book, didn't I? Unless Mike never truly was my name. The question that we're left with, and the question I pose to you and that I still need time to think through is, what did Michael forget? And how did he forget it? Was he the bite of 87 victim? Is that how he lost his memory? Did some yeah, sort of think, other I trauma think, cause yeah. him memory loss? And more importantly, is there some other strange connection between Michael and the crying child? Like, seriously, why would the book say that the party was for Michael when FNAF 4 clearly tells us that it's not? I can't believe that this is just some sort of typo or something. This book is so precisely engineered to be the 
the linchpin in too many mysteries of this franchise yeah, for that to be the case. That's true. So could that connection between There's the two still brothers be the reason why Michael things are out of place, but somehow be different? I'm pretty All sure he's for Michael. Day, my friends, but at least for now, we're one more confirmed step closer to getting the answers we've been looking for for so long. So maybe that's the reason why the story mm -hmm. is in fact called Step Closer, because otherwise that title oh, for a story about a kid true. losing an eye and an arm just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I honestly Next thought time. the second story was more step closer than than the first because it was about Ballora stepping closer to you like the second story should have been called step closer anyway um I'm coming to tackle home. Susie yeah. and her connections to FNAF 6 in the meantime remember a that food theory to exists FNAF as a channel 6 okay okay I, I didn't see any of that I'm interested to see what he, he's going to say about coming home um honestly I have no connections to it i have no theories on it anyway thank you so much for watching and i will see you all next time goodbye